Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Welcome back to the holodeck training program, Lieutenant Monroe. Although I am quite confident in your abilities, Starfleet regulations specifically state that all personnel are to undergo fitness and combat readiness training at least once per Earth year. It is now time to begin your training. Are you ready to proceed? I'm ready. These exercises are designed to enhance your skills, Lieutenant. Take a few moments to move around the holodeck. By pressing your move forward, move backward, strafe left, and strafe right keys, you should be able to freely maneuver about. Very good. Let us begin the exercises. Jumping plays a key role in maneuvering around your environment, Lieutenant. Successful maneuvering is the first and most important step to your survival. A jump is executed by pressing the jump key. If a jump is executed in conjunction with any of the movement keys, you will jump in that direction. For example, pressing the jump key and the move forward key will make you jump forward. Clear the obstacles ahead by jumping over them. Jump over all three obstacles and then we will continue the exercise. Excellent. Let's go on. Crouching and walking allow you to access areas that would otherwise be too small for you to maneuver in, such as a duct or a Jeffrey's tube. A mission success or failure may hinge on your ability to move effectively through tight spaces. A crouch is executed by pressing the crouch key. As with a jump, you can move while being crouched. To perform a crouch walk, press and hold the crouch key while you press and hold a movement key. Take note, Lieutenant, that while crouch walking will allow you to maneuver in tight spaces, it does reduce your speed. Clear the obstacles ahead by crouch walking under them. Maneuver through all three and we can continue the exercise. Very good, Lieutenant. Let's continue. Use both your crouching and jumping skills to clear the following obstacles. Proceed to the ladder after you clear this portion of the course. Excellent work. To climb a ladder, look up while pressing the forward movement key. Looking down while pressing the forward movement key, will allow you to descend. Lieutenant, climb the ladder and exit through the door to continue the exercise. Excellent. Excellent. 
Notice that some obstacles are too high for a standard jump. To clear obstacles such as these, you will need to execute a crouch jump. This is done by pressing and holding the jump key, and then pressing the crouch key while in the air for more vertical momentum. This will allow you to clear taller objects. Utilize both the standard and crouch jump to navigate these obstacles and advance to the next exercise. Excellent work. At the end of the corridor, you will see a maintenance door leading to a Jeffrey's tube. As you approach the maintenance door, execute a crouch walk to enter the tube. Once inside, follow the tube down the ladder to the maintenance door below. We will continue with the second set of examinations when you complete this exercise. Excellent, Lieutenant. Your performance was satisfactory. If you are ready, we will begin the second examination. On your missions, you will encounter occasions where jumping will require both distance and precision. In a situation like this, a miscalculated step will often end in injury or death. For this exercise, jump across each of the platforms and get to the other side. While in the air, you will find you can control your velocity to a degree by using your movement keys. This will allow you to tune your jump for a precision landing. Very good, Lieutenant. Let's continue. It 
is unfortunate, but you can expect to be injured on away missions. Jump or run off this ledge to the floor below. Notice the change in your health status. While your hazard suit is designed to help absorb the shock of an impact, a fall from too great a height will end in injury or death. As I am sure you remember, your hazard suit provides a great deal of tactical assistance. For example, it continuously monitors your life signs, feeding that information to your tactical eye display, or TED. This data can be seen in the lower left of your display. Additionally, your hazard suit does more than just protect and inform. It is also lined with nanites, which when powered, can provide field level medical assistance. To power the nanites, your suit is equipped with a phase matrix converter that will allow it to utilize many different energy types. Your suit will alert you to such an energy source with an identification overlay inside your TED. Additionally, your suit will identify energy sources used for recharging your energy weapons. Identify the energy terminal on the wall near you. Approach it and press your use key to power the nanites within your suit. They will provide medical assistance until your life signs are normal or the energy in the terminal is exhausted. Excellent work, Lieutenant. Your progress is acceptable. Many of the doors in your environment will open automatically as you approach. However, some doors, such as the one with the damaged operations panel, are malfunctioning and will not open. Some doors can open, but are locked. A door's locked status can be ascertained by looking for a red or green indicator light, most often found above the door itself. You will notice the light on the functioning door is red, meaning it is currently locked and will not open. If you look around, you should be able to find a switch nearby. Walk to the switch and press your use key. Well done. Notice the indicator light is now green, confirming that the door is unlocked. To open the door and proceed to our next exercise, move to its operations panel and press your use key. Excellent. To operate a lift, move to its operations panel and press your use key to activate it. Like many objects you can interact with, the operations panel is indicated by an identification overlay inside your TED. Use this lift to proceed to our next exercise. Excellent. Interacting with your world is vital to your success and survival. You have already seen where interaction can operate a door, activate a lift, or draw energy from a terminal. Here you will see that your interaction can change the very environment itself. Move to the nearby operations panel and activate it by pressing your use key. Excellent. Notice how using the panel activated the bridge. Interacting with the environment will often allow you to continue when there seems to be no other way to progress. Now, Lieutenant, cross the bridge as we are ready to begin the next exercise. Like your hazard suit, your tricorder also has an interface to your tactical eye display. Approach one of the crystal deposits. Use your tricorder key to activate your tricorder. Notice that once your tricorder is active, an identification overlay appears around the deposit in your TED. Now aim your tricorder at the crystal deposit and press and hold the fire button. This will activate your tricorder's scanning functionality and provide you with additional information about the object. Excellent work, Lieutenant. When active, 
Your tricorder also feeds tactical data to your TED. Data from the tricorder's angular proximity discriminator is represented in the upper right corner of your display. Now, note the green resonance beacon. That beacon represents my location in your environment. Watch the beacon as I move about the environment. Notice how it moves to track my relative location. The angular proximity discriminator provides a unique resonance beacon for most object types. For example, non-hostile life forms are marked with a green beacon, while hostile or aggressive ones are red. Additionally, the discriminator will denote your mission objectives with a gold circle to signify their importance. Please proceed through the archway to the next exercise. Your tactical eye display is capable of artificially boosting the gain levels in all photonic registers. This allows you some degree of night vision. For this exercise, use your night vision key to activate the night vision mode. Then navigate through this cave to the exit on the other side. Excellent work, Lieutenant. Now, Lieutenant, we will recertify you on advanced tricorder mechanics. Activate your tricorder and move to the nearby console marked with an identification overlay in your TED. Modulate the console by first aiming your tricorder at it, then pressing and holding the fire button. Your tricorder will feed progress data to your TED, providing you with constant feedback on your progress. Continue modulating the console until the process is complete. Satisfactory work, Lieutenant. On simple consoles like this one, your tricorder will be able to modulate the necessary carrier wave itself. However, more sophisticated systems will require user assistance to complete the task. Let's move on. Activate your phaser by pressing the weapon group key. Your tricorder will lower and your phaser should be readied. Notice the red force field impeding your progress. To disable the force field, you must shoot the plasma conduit that powers it. When you are ready, press the fire key to destroy the conduit. As you fire, notice how the energy register on your lower right rapidly decreases. This energy bar measures the energy count for your currently active weapon. In this case, the phaser. Excellent work, Lieutenant. Through its interface with your TED, your tricorder provides you with additional view modes. Activate your tricorder and press the alternate fire button. Notice how your view changes. Your tricorder is now feeding information on the structural integrity of nearby objects directly to your TED. In this view mode, you can see stress fractures and structural weaknesses that would normally go unnoticed. Note that objects with structural flaws are often susceptible to weapons fire. Use your phaser on the objects identified in the structural integrity view mode. Let's move on to the weapons examination.
Now, Lieutenant, your records indicate that you need to recertify on both the standard Federation phaser and the compression rifle. We'll begin with the phaser. For this exercise, use your phaser to destroy as many practice targets as you can. You may use either primary or alternate fire, but you must continue the exercise until you destroy enough targets to qualify for recertification. Good luck. Excellent. We will now repeat the exercise for the compression rifle. As with your phaser, you may use either primary or secondary fire. However, you must continue until you destroy enough targets to qualify for recertification. Exemplary work, Lieutenant. You have now successfully completed the training exercises. You are fit for active duty as a member of the Hazard Team. Thank you.